Sachin Jaiwal, the pink of your health. Hi, welcome to the first video of our Jinjaiva series. In the previous video, we learned that the periodontium consists of two soft tissue components, namely the gingiva and periodontal ligament, and two hard tissue components, namely the cementum and alveolar bone. In this video, we will learn about the gingiva. The gingiva is the oral mucosal tissue that surrounds the teeth and covers the underlying alveolar bone. Anatomically, gingiva can be divided into three parts. Free or marginal gingiva, attached gingiva and interdental papilla. Let us first learn about the marginal gingiva. The terminating edge or border of the gingiva that forms a collar-like covering around the teeth is known as the marginal gingiva. It is referred to as unattached or free gingiva as it is not attached to the underlying structures. Marginal gingiva is keratinized and forms a collar around the neck of the tooth. Now when you wear a shirt, don't you see a natural space between your neck and the collar of the shirt? Similarly, a space exists between the tooth and marginal gingiva. This V-shaped space is called the gingival sulcus, which is bordered by the sulcular epithelium on one side and the tooth on the other, with the junctional epithelium present at its most apical end. The depth of the gingival sulcus is a significant diagnostic parameter and is an indicator of periodontal health. Hence, this is a fundamental concept in periodontology. The depth of a gingival sulcus measures 0 or close to 0 mm under perfectly normal or optimal circumstances. However, a sulcus depth of up to 3 mm is considered normal. The gingival epithelium attaches to the tooth surface via the junctional epithelium. So what is the junctional epithelium and why is it important? The junctional epithelium is that part of the gingival epithelium that attaches the marginal gingiva to the tooth surface. As you can see, it forms a junction between the tooth and the gingiva, hence is called the junctional epithelium. The junctional epithelium is vital to the maintenance of periodontal health. It forms the epithelial attachment and therefore creates a firm connection of the soft tissue to the tooth surface. It is permeable and thus serves as a pathway for diffusion of the metabolic products of plaque, bacteria like toxins, chemotactic agents and antigens. There is also diffusion in the opposite direction of host defense substances like the serum exudates, antibodies, etc. Now that we learned about marginal gingiva, let us move on to the attached gingiva. It is a continuation of the marginal gingiva, is keratinized and is attached to the underlying periosteum by epithelium and connective tissue. Stippling is a distinguishing characteristic of attached gingiva that occurs from the connective tissue projections within the gingival tissue, which create microscopic depressions and elevations. This gives an orange peel appearance to the attached gingiva, which is lost in periodontal inflammation. Now let us understand the importance of the attached gingiva. It is important because it braces the marginal gingiva and prevents the apical spread of inflammation to the deeper periodontium. It allows for proper deflection of food and also provides room for the placement of the toothbrush. Apart from these, it has an aesthetic value and is critical for the overall maintenance of gingival health. 
For many years, it was believed that an adequate width of the attached gingiva is critical for the maintenance of gingival and periodontal health. Some researchers also believe that the width of the attached gingiva helps to determine disease prognosis and treatment outcomes. Thus, it is important for a dentist to understand how to measure the width of the attached gingiva, which will be covered in our next video. Moving on now, let's talk about what lies beyond the attached gingiva. Apical to the attached gingiva lies the alveolar mucosa, the junction between the freely movable and fragile alveolar mucosa and the firm attached gingiva is called the mucogingival junction. This junction is movable and it is usually constant throughout life. In the lingual aspect of the mandible, the mucogingival junction is formed at the junction between the attached gingiva and the movable lingual mucosa at the floor of the mouth. However, there is one part of the mouth that does not have a mucogingival junction. Do you know what that is? Yes, it is the palate because it does not contain freely movable alveolar mucosa. Now let us learn how to clinically differentiate the alveolar mucosa from attached gingiva. Alveolar mucosa is the area of tissue beyond the mucogingival junction. It is less firmly attached and redder than the attached gingiva due to its rich blood supply. The alveolar mucosa is non-keratinized and provides a softer and more flexible area for the movement of the cheeks and lips. Thus, the attached gingiva and alveolar mucosa can be differentiated based on color attachment to underlying bone and histologic features like the connective tissue content and keratinization of epithelium. The next and final part of the gingiva to be discussed is the interdental papilla or interdental gingiva. This part of the gingiva fills the interproximal space just apical to the contact areas. The orange peel appearance is also seen in the central core of the interdental papilla, which is formed by the attached gingiva. The interdental gingiva of the anterior teeth is pyramidal in shape, whereas that of the posterior teeth is tent-shaped and flatter in the buccolingual direction. Two factors determine the morphology of the interdental gingiva. They are the point of contact between two adjacent teeth and the presence or absence of gingival recession. As the posterior teeth have contact areas rather than contact points, the interdental papilla in the posterior teeth assumes a concave shape called coal. It is basically a valley-like depression that connects the facial and lingual papillae and is not visible clinically. The coal is non-keratinized and is therefore prone to infection. That's why usually it is said that gingivitis starts in the interproximal area. When there is a diastema, the gingiva develops a smooth rounded surface devoid of interdental papillae and is tightly bonded to the interdental bone. Did you know? Periodontal disease often causes loss of interdental papilla, which leads to an unesthetic appearance, especially when present in the anterior teeth. These are referred to as black triangles. Let's move on now to define healthy gingiva. Gingiva is an important tissue in the periodontium. As dentists, it is important to understand how healthy gingiva appears. Pristine gingiva is a state of super healthy gingiva. It represents a rare but realistic entity 
and refers to a clinical condition with no attachment loss, no bleeding on probing, sulcular probing depth less than or equal to 3 mm, and no redness, clinical swelling or edema, or pus. This state of fastidious oral hygiene is rarely achieved clinically. In the next video, we will learn about the histological features. Pop quiz We hope you had fun learning with us.